All right, in this screencast, I'm going to derive the equation that we'll use in our problems when we're calculating um, power from belts. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we just have to consider a, a flat belt going around a pulley at a particular angle, and the tensions are T1, T2, and the tension is just at the point where the belt is about to slip. So here's the here's the pulley. Uh, here's the belt. I don't know if you can visualize the belt going around here, T1, T2. But I'm going to just say that um, this is tension T1, uh, and this is tension T2. So it's the same as this plus this little extra bit. Okay, so this is the the tense side. Okay, we're going to take a small angle uh, theta. I know that looks a big angle here, but you know, just just consider this a really small angle, and I've magnified it there, <coughs> magnified it here, uh, just for illustration purposes. I'm going to resolve the two vectors. So here's the ten tension vector on this side. So it has a horizontal and a vertical component, and similarly on the other side. If this angle here is theta, then this is half the angle d theta, so that's the vertical. So if I convert that to the horizontal, that angle there then becomes theta or d theta over 2. That should be d theta over 2. Uh, and similarly over here. There will be a reaction force. Okay, so as the pulley goes over, there will be some friction and there will be a reaction force. And there will be a friction force. Okay. So uh, if I want to resolve the forces, so this reaction force, um, I've labeled it N here, it could also be R. Um, this reaction force N must be equal uh, and opposite to, to these two forces here. So this is a right angle triangle, so sine d theta over 2 is opposite over hypotenuse so therefore uh, I could say that, that in this case the hypotenuse t plus d times theta sine d theta over 2 plus here t is the hypotenuse so t times sine d theta over 2 that's these two vertical components when I add them up that should be equal to n Okay, so that's my formula. Now, if we assume that sine d theta is approximately equal to d theta radians because d theta is so small, well, let's just uh, look at that for a sec. Uh, here is a, a calculator, and I put it onto uh, radians, and I'm going to take a really small angle, like uh, point. Let's, uh, clear that. Uh, point zero three. So if I go sine of point zero three equals 0 0.03. So in radians, when you have a really small angle, the sine of the angle is actually equal to the angle. So I can replace sine d theta over 2 with just d theta over 2. So sine d theta over 2 becomes just d theta over 2. And similarly over here. So I have a t times d theta over 2 plus t times d theta over 2, that's 2t times d theta over 2 plus dt. And when I'm multiplying that out I get 2 times d theta over 2 plus dt times d theta over 2. Now this is a really small number and this is a really small number. So if I multiply a really small number by a really small number and then by 5 by 2 I get a really small number and it's so small that I can consider it to be zero. And then my 2t divided by 2 just gives me t. So I get t times d theta plus this really small number, which I'm going to say is equal to zero. Therefore, t times d theta is equal to n. And we're just going to park that formula now for a few, uh, for a few minutes. So there's parked. Now if I look at the, the horizontal forces, so we have a horizontal force going in this direction and in this direction plus the friction force here. 
And the friction is the coefficient of friction mu times the reaction force n. So if I write the uh, equation, so over here it would be t times d theta cosine, so we're looking at this side, cosine d theta over 2. So that's that part of it here. Uh, and on the green here, so this is t, so it would be t times cosine d theta over 2 plus the friction, which is mu m. So I'm saying the force is going to the right, or equal to the force is going to the left. So we have that equation. Okay, so there it is. And there's the first part uh, still frozen. Now, if d theta is a very small angle, okay, and then we have it, so I can say it's effectively equal to zero, right? And the cosine of zero is one. So therefore, this disappears and I just get t plus mu n and this disappears and I just get t plus d theta and then the two t's cancel out and I get mu n is equal to d theta okay we've we've parked this guy t times d theta is equal to n and now I have mu n is equal to d theta from here but we've a value for n here, so n is t times d theta, so instead of n, I'm going to put in t times d theta. And then I'm going to divide both sides by t, so this becomes mu times d theta over dt times <laughs> dt over t. And then to get rid of the, the differentials, we, uh, we integrate. So I'm going to integrate between naught and theta, and between uh, t1 and t2. Okay, so there's the integral. When I integrate mu into respect of theta, I get mu times theta. I put in theta for theta, and I get mu theta. When I integrate 1 over t times dt, I get the natural log of t. And then I put in the t1 and the t2. And from the law of logs, natural log of t1 minus natural log t2 is the same as the natural log of t1 over t2. And then if I get the anti-log of both sides, uh, t1 over t2 uh, is equal to uh, e, Euler's number, e to the power of mu times theta. And that's uh, how the equation is um, derived.